Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the nested let statement inside of Power Query. Now, if you've not really seen the nested let statement before, we'll take a look at how does it look like. We'll also talk about what problem does it solve and how can it help you make your queries shorter. Let's start. All right, before we move any further, let's just take a look at the data and the problem that we're trying to solve. I have a column here, which is where the date has been concatenated, meaning the first four numbers are the year, the next two numbers are the month, and the last two numbers are the date of that particular month or year. Now, of course, we don't really write the dates that way, and I'd like to kind of use this particular column to create a proper date next to it. And we're gonna solve this problem using Power Query. And I've already created a query which solves this particular problem, but using native methods or using the UI UX of Power Query. Let's just see that if we can use a nested let statement to solve this particular problem. I have a query here. Let me just kind of open up this query. So in the query tab, I'm just gonna click on edit and the Power Query window opens up. All right, I'm in Power Query and you can see that my data has been loaded. Let's just take a look at what steps am I going to do in order for me to correct this state. The first thing that I'm actually going to do is extract the first four characters of this particular concatenation to be able to extract the year. That's one. Now, once I extract the year, then I, I'm going to extract the next two, which is the month right here, and I'll just have another column. And of course, the last two will be extracted, which is nothing but my date. Now, once I have extracted the year, the month, and the date, I will reconcatenate them once again, but in the correct order. In India, we follow DDMMYY, and that is what my Power Query will be able to accept once I convert that into a proper date. So I'm just going to combine this as the date, this as the month, and this as the year, concatenate them once again using a separator, maybe a dash or something. So I merge these three columns in the right order, date, month, and the year, and this forms a correct column. Now this is now, as of now, a text. Of course, I will change that to a data type of date, and this works absolutely fine. Now the thing is that in order for me to solve that problem, I created a bunch of steps, one after the other, to be able to solve this problem. Now if you've never really visited the advanced editor, which is where you can take a look at the let and the in statement, which is nothing but the M code, let's just go visit that today. So in the view tab, we have something called as an advanced editor. I'm just gonna click here and take a look at this M code that got generated while you're clicking the options on the top of Power Query ribbon. So we have a let statement, that's how any query starts and we have an in statement and that's how the query ends. And in between we have all these steps which are nothing but variables and we have done some or the other actions to clean our data. Now let's just go figure out that can we write a nested let statement in order to shorten the query and not really have all these steps that we have particularly done. To be able to write a nested let, although we can write it here, right here in the advanced editor, but I'm actually going to go right in the add columns tab and maybe create a custom column to be able to create that same column that we have created, but using a nested let statement. Let's just start. All right, to be able to solve this, I'll have to create uh, like a custom column and let's just head over to the add columns tab and click on the custom column to be able to write a formula that can have multiple steps and will be able to solve this particular problem. You can also see that I have deleted all the steps here that created my merged column initially and I will pack all those columns in a nested let statement. Let's just start. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna extract the first four letters of this particular concatenation. And I'm gonna use the left function just like Excel. So the equivalent of the left function in Power Query is called text.start. It asks you with the same two inputs, what's your text? My text is nothing but the dates column. And I'd like to extract four characters from it. I'm just gonna to commit to that, press enter. And that's where I have the first four characters, which is the year extracted. Now, obviously I will not start creating multiple steps, nor will I start creating multiple columns here to be able to solve this problem. So let's just go ahead to this custom column that we are making and make our formula ahead. Now let's just start writing the let statement. And once I write the let statement, I will have the ability to declare multiple variables. Let's just call the first variable as the year extracted. So I'm just going to call this as year. And this is the formula that ex actually extracts the year. That's my first step that I do. Next step that I do is nothing but the month. I extract the month. So I put a comma, I move to the next line and I declare another variable called month. And that is where I I extract the month. Now I can actually copy the previous formula. The formula is going to be nearly the same. I'm just going to rename that as month, M-O-N-T-H. And of course, rename that as text.middle, which is nothing but the mid function of Power Query, which is where it asks you, hey, where are your uh, text? What's your start position? And how many characters do you want to extract? Now, in order for me to take a look that have I extracted the month correctly or not, let's just go test this particular output, which is the month. So I'm just going to remove the comma because that is going to be my last variable or last step that I declare. 
and maybe move to the next line and write in after in you finish your query and i would like to call the variable which came in the end which is nothing but the month so here is my first step here is my second step and that's the step that i'd like to call to see as an output so i'm just going to maybe say okay and now i get to see the month output you can see that it's been extracting it correctly so 01 for jan 08 for august and so on and so forth so so far so good let's just now open up this formula and maybe insert a third step I put a comma and then I insert a third step. I am just going to copy the previous line, call that as date. This is going to be text.end. Uh, That's your right function. And I'll say, hey, from the end, extract two. And let's just also test this particular uh, variable out. So I'm just going to call that I'd like to now see my date. I don't really want to see the year, the month, and I'd like to see the date. I'm just going to commit to the formula, say OK. And now I can see that I have extracted my date. So in a single formula, I have been able to create three variables and extract each one of them separately. Now it's the time to combine the three and concatenate into a date column. So I'm just going to maybe put a comma and create another step. And I'm just going to call this as my final date. Use the function called date here. So there is a function in Power Query called hash date. Now the first part of hash date is what's your year. Do we have a variable for that? Of course we have a variable year for that. I'll put a comma. The next part of the hash date is what's your month. And do we have a variable? Of course we have it again. And the last part is date and we again have a variable for that. Now I'm actually using these three variables year, month and the date inside of final date. And of course once I finish my query I'd like to extract the final date to be able to see as an output. Let's just kind of commit to this and press enter and let's just see what happens. Now you can see that it actually gives me an error. Let's just go figure out what the error is. If I just click on the side of the error, it says that you extracted 2021 as the year and I'm not able to convert that to a number. That clearly means that my hash date function is expecting to have year as a numeric output. Unfortunately, text.start delivers a four letter textual output and I have to convert that to a number. So what I should have done at the start is that if this delivers me a text and if this is actually a number, I should have actually converted converted that into a number and the formula for that is number dot from that means this text is actually going to deliver you a number it's a text but please convert that into a number so number dot from I have a formula that will actually convert a text to a number and I will have to wrap that around all the three uh, variables that I have created so number dot from number dot from and of course number dot from all right once I have done the wrapping of number dot from in all the three variables I still have the final date and in the final date you can see year goes as a number, month goes as a number, and date actually also goes as a number. I'm just going to commit to this and press enter, and you can see that now it actually delivers me the correct date. Now there is one small problem. The problem is that this is actually not converted into a data type of date, although it shows like a date, but it's not really a data type of date. Take a look at the data type. We have A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. And I don't really want to create another step to be able to convert it into dates. So let's just use the same step to be able to convert this into a date. Now whenever you add a function called table dot add columns the last step of that function is the ability to define the data type so if I open up the formula bar right here you can see that we have table dot add column and this is everything that we have written inside table dot add column if I just come right after final date which is where the table dot add column finishes I can put a comma and I can say that the column type of this particular column that I have created is going to be a date. If I commit to this, press enter, you can see that this actually becomes a date. Obviously custom name of the column is a bad name and I can just rename that as date. And now this actually becomes the date that I actually wanted. All right, we created an add columns tab and we defined a let and an in statement there. We created three variables, but let's just also take a look at the a Power Query editor or the advanced editor. And let's just take a look that do we really have a nested let statement or not? So I just click over to the advanced editor and you can see that we definitely have a nested let statement. We had the let at the start of the query and we created our own let statement to be able to solve a multi-step problem into a single step. All right, that was all about creating nested let statements. Let me know if you have any questions around this. I'll be very, very happy to reply. And of course, one quick shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you'd like to learn DAX and Power Query right from scratch, build up your level so that you start solving more challenging, more sophisticated sophisticated problems of your own data, I will highly recommend that you take a look at the courses and perhaps join them as well. It will be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.